Futures versus shares for day traders, Michael. Um, a lot of benefits to both sides of this coin, but when it comes to trading in and out uh, every day here, every couple of minutes, hopefully people are able to take profits if their strategies are uh, well-founded. Futures, a lot more benefits than those shares. Uh, and I wanted to tap into this with a very simple, simple example, which is just Wednesday's action following the uh, election day here in the United States in Sticks futures, small exchange, small technology futures there, which is 60 technology stocks that span biotechs, information technology, uh, retail technology and media technology stocks there. And I wanted to compare it to the action in NASDAQ using QQQ shares. And the, the question that often gets posed to guys like you and me, Michael, uh, working at the small exchange here is, you know, if tech stocks and tech futures trade so similarly, then why would I even opt for futures? I mean, you look at this chart here, and it's almost one for one action uh, between these two markets. And it's a lot of action following election day. What? Why would I go for, for one over the other? Hmm. I think that for a long time, ETFs were the only accessible option for a yeah. lot of traders. You look at the most actively traded ETFs and commonly it's SPY, which is the S&P 500 and QQQ, which is the NASDAQ. Uh, just because they're simple, uh, they're kind of what I'm used to. If I've traded Apple before, I can pretty easily move from Apple shares to mm -hmm. an ETF like QQQ, just priced the same way, moves in the same number of increments. Uh, but nowadays with small exchange products, you can get that access and maintain that simplicity. You don't have to go from, yeah. well, uh, you know, QQQ is, I'll say, $285 here. Now I'm moving to a NASDAQ product, which is $12,000 to trade. Yeah. Uh, with something like Sticks, the small exchange feature, you get that same access, though putting up a huge chunk of change. Yeah, absolutely. I think that the and it's something that we're not even touching on because I want to go deep on this topic for day traders. But before even getting there, day traders or less active traders, uh, investors, if you will, uh, alike are probably um, disincentivized to make the jump from NASDAQ shares to NASDAQ futures or any market shares to uh, the futures of those equities um, because just starting out the way that they look, you know, the, the NASDAQ uh, shares going from 285 to 286. Well, that's just a dollar times however many shares I have. NASDAQ futures, not the same, whether you're dealing with E-mini futures or micro E-mini futures or the big futures that were created decades before the E-minis. It's, it's a lot to deal with. And it's a lot of people just uh, instantly turn off to it. And they're like, I, I don't even care. And um, yeah, I don't know. Hopefully I'm not in trouble here because there's a, uh, a lot of side. This is why I go into the office to get away from these sirens here on the west side of Chicago. But anyways, let's dive into this relationship for day traders. And we're going to crunch a bunch of numbers here for you, uh, starting out with the fact that futures just cost less than stocks per unit of exposure. This is a, a huge selling point um, that can get twisted into the wrong ways. Like you, you uh, alluded to this, Michael, that NASDAQ futures um, even the small versions of them are over a $10,000 product. And so when you're talking about less cost for a large product like that, a lot of people are like, man, I don't want to go to futures because that's just, that's, that's almost bad leverage. You know, that's that negative connotation with leverage. Whereas here, you know, we have that same, you know, cost less per unit of exposure, but for smaller products, this here is a a small technology product that is very similar to QQQ. You can see it in the way it trades. That's a $5,000 product costs you 440 bucks to reenact that with QQQ shares. The best savings you're going to get is 2,500 bucks. That's a lot of money to post for uh, some movement that you're looking for uh, on an hour by hour basis. That is a lot of money to post for a single position. I mean, if you yeah. wanted exposure to technology and you also wanted exposure to oil or interest rates or single stocks, you really, you're pushing the bounds of your portfolio if you're trading QQQ and the beauty of the future. I mean, this is not to be understated. You're getting $5,000 of exposure for just $440. I mean, that's significant 
capital efficiency and, and cost saving that's really only exists with futures. It doesn't exist with fractional shares, uh, something similar with options, but then you got to worry about time decay and deltas yeah. and strikes and all, all of this stuff. Uh, really the best bang for your buck is going to be in the futures in a smaller realm with small contracts, as opposed to that $12,000 uh, cost we talked about. I'm glad that you bring up the fit, like your, your mind is so, you know, you've been around these products so much that your mind is so well-trained to translate efficiency and lower costs to diversification. Like this is by no means, uh, and this is where, you know, older exchanges or uh, where people who first try out futures, they get it wrong and they get turned off to the concept uh, mm -hmm. immediately is they think, okay, $5,000 worth of stocks either cost me 440 bucks or 2,500. I'm going to choose the cheaper one and then ramp that up. No, we're, we're talking about, you know, taking this cheaper option so you can go to diversified markets like Michael was speaking to. I'm glad that you brought that up. Now, going along this trail a little bit further, you look at Wednesday's return. And so, I know that day traders don't look at just buying on the open and then selling on the close. But just to, to uh, illuminate this concept a little bit further, if you had done that, that would have been a six return of 18% versus 2.8% per share that you bought in QQQ. This enhances returns. And like Michael eloquently hit on, it leaves more capital for your other trades. I mean, Wednesday, everything was moving. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so if I had you know, two thousand dollars or or whatever to trade on Wednesday, and I I was able to only put all of that money to one position in QQQ and get this two point eight percent return. That's great. That would have been it's it was a big move. That's a great daily return for one uh one market there. But what would have been much better is if I could take that two thousand dollars, put five hundred to my uh, technology stocks position. And then go take advantage of all the movement that we saw in foreign exchange, in commodities, in just different stock markets as well, right? Yeah. And if you're a day trader, you want to be selective in your trades, right? If there's only a finite number of opportunities, you got to choose which one you want to allocate capital to. Uh, I mean, a 2.8% move in QQQ is a pretty big move too. Yeah. I mean, if you're day trading the Qs, you know, they're probably moving maybe like half a percent, uh, sometimes sure. a percent on a daily basis. So when, when a, an opportunity comes to make 18% return on capital with sticks, uh, you want to be there and seize that opportunity. You don't, you don't see it every day, um, but you're going to get more of those opportunities with futures than you would with the ETFs. Absolutely. And, and you know, getting a little bit deeper into it, you've got these opportunities throughout the day. And this is what a true active day trader is looking at, Michael, is, you know, buying uh, where you think it's cheap, and then offloading that risk. Hopefully, I mean, my best trades when I was professionally trading at the, the Chicago Board of Trade, what you want is to be in and out of a position in 30 seconds, right? Like that's the sign of a, a, a you're, well, you're it could be a day. really bad, a really bad position, but usually that's a sign of a great position is, oh, I bought this technology, uh, these technology stocks, and then I'm immediately able to take a profit on that. Not the case here when you're talking about QQQ shares or shares of anything because pattern day trading regulations don't allow you to trade frequently in short time frames here. And these futures are both affording you flexibility in their, their efficiency, their lower cost, but also, Michael, uh, they're getting around this pattern day trading uh, that is inhibiting a lot of activity for uh, uh, day traders. If you want to speak to the, I know you know more about pattern day trading than I do. I've been burned by the pattern day trading rule many times in the past, and nothing is more frustrating. Uh, I mean, you're trying to increase your number of occurrences. That's what probabilistic trading is all about. And if you're limited in selection even further, you know, one, you're looking for great opportunities. This is a perfect setup. Uh, maybe you like your existing position. You're expecting a news announcement. That's one reducing your number of opportunities. Then only having three bullets it makes it really difficult to trade. Uh, I would much rather have the flexibility to put on five positions, peel off some, maybe add to a position, adjust. Yeah. Uh, if a new and better opportunity comes up, I want to close my existing exposure and reallocate sure. there. So with the cost savings and with no pattern day trading restrictions, I don't know why every day trader isn't considering smaller futures. Yeah, I mean, you look at especially a day like Wednesday after uh, election day, I mean, between each of these little dots that I kind of just threw out there for, you know, just whatever reason, there's no science to it. 
But between each of those uh, dots is about 40 or $50 of opportunity. Mm -hmm. And so while you could, you know, we showed this return, that's beautiful, buying once and then selling once, that's great. But what's especially great is you've got a move from 54 to about 55 in sticks. That's a $100 move per contract. In the midst of that Wednesday trading, you've got probably like $300, $400 worth of movement back and forth here. I mean, you've got right here starting out the day, a move from 54 up to uh, 54.70, back down 30 cents, up 40 cents, down 20 or 30 cents, new highs up here. I mean, that's what day trading is all about. And you can't get around that with shares of stock. And that's Final just Michael. one market too, Frank. Imagine you have a multi-screen yeah. setup. You're also sure. looking at precious metals, at dollar, at these other uh, markets we spoke to at the beginning of the show. I mean, there's there's so much there to take advantage of. No, I'm glad I, I'm glad you stepped on the last slide here because you're so animated about this. Because you're totally right. I mean, we're just talking about literally trading one sector of one asset class. When you bounce that out to metals, energies, everything else, um, your hands are really tied. It's like, all right, I got one shot in all of these markets here on Wednesday when I should have the flexibility to take multiple shots at all these markets uh, and that you can do here at the small exchange. And what's especially nice, whether it's technology stocks or metals or energies or US dollars, like we talked about, um, everything is sized so that every day is about a $100 trade. Like mm -hmm. I can't, this might take a little bit of time for uh, our audience here for it to set in. And it's not you know, it has anything to do with uh, intelligence. It's just, it's such a new concept that I, uh, that is not built into other financial products, whereby when I jump from stocks to uh, metals or to, to any, any other asset class, the fact that one unit translates to about a hundred dollars worth of daily trading is huge. You've got per share in QQQ, $4 of trading. You go to a different, you go to XLK, which is just a different technology ETF. Uh, and that's a market that is, I think, like a third the size of QQQ. So per share, now that thing is moving like one or two dollars. I go to Amazon. That's a technology stock per share. That thing's moving like fifty, sixty dollars. It's really uh, understated the simplicity of just one contract in each of these futures. It has that low efficient cost. It allows you to trade intraday as many times as you want, and every unit is sized around what I think is comfortable for a lot of people, $50 to $100 worth of movement. 